everyone, Ernie Tech here. I want to bring to your attention a piece of software which can be either free or for the low, low cost of $10 Australian. It is something that I think every Yaesu HF rig owner, or at least several of them, like the 991A, should have. And what it is, it's a almost clone, a clone light of the venerable RT system software that we uh, use to make menu changes and memory changes and up um, upload and download and back up our, uh, our, our system information. And the 991A, if you have one of these things, you know that thing's a pain in the neck as far as its menu. What you have is a list, like a line list, like a line item list, like you're back at work. You, and each one of those things, 153 of them, has to be set just right or things are not going to work well, especially if you're trying to get your radio to work with things like um, FT8 and, and all that kind of stuff. Once you get it all set up, you don't want to fool with it again. You, you congratulate yourself that, in fact, you got it set up working at all, and then you should save it. And this is a great piece of software uh, for half the price, less than half the price, or for, for that matter, if you want to be a real cheapskate for free, uh, but Chris is asking for uh, for ten dollars anyway. So it's from Chris VK two BYI down in Australia, um, right below Sydney somewhere, and this is pretty cool. And it's called FT Restore, and I'll put a link in the description below so you can go try it out if you're a Yesu HF radio um, user um, like me, a nine nine one A aficionado. Okay, let's get started with this thing. So all you have to do is just hit the new button. Unlike a lot of software, especially uh, RT systems, this is not going to remember the settings between each session. So every time you start it up, you're going to have to put the information back in again. Is that a big deal? I don't think it's a big deal, but it's a little drawback. Maybe you don't like that. I don't care. Anyway, mine is COM9 for the enhanced port, 19.2 for the baud rate. Stop bits are two because I'm always told to, to stop two times at least, third times the term. The baud rate I put in there at 19.2 and I had that match to the radio and I also had that match to the COM port rate on the uh, PC because I like 19.2. I don't know why. It's right between the low and the high, somewhere in there. Anyway, that gets things set up and then you get this lovely little spreadsheet right here. And as you can see, it's going to pull off the radio all of the kind of pertinent things. Now, the difference between this and the RT systems is just that the RT systems pulls down a heck of a lot more stuff. Do you need a heck of a lot more stuff? Is it going to change the dynamics a lot? No, I don't know. For the most part, for what we're trying to accomplish, especially on, I don't know, VHF and UHF, but for the most part, you're looking for these things. The six here and then this memory tag column. One little trick, though. Go over here to settings and preferences when you do this and make sure that this enable memory tags checkbox is set. Otherwise, this column's not going to show up and you're going to have six columns of gobbledygook and nothing to say what it is. So, yeah, you definitely want to have that memory tag columns, memory tag comments column. Uh, yeah, so you hit the enable memory tags. Also, you can decide what kind of a spreadsheet. I don't know that <laughs> there's much of a difference, but I think that if you're using a piece of software like LibreOffice or something, it's, it might, I don't know, I'm not an expert in this stuff, it might have an easier time understanding a 97-2003, the land before time when dinosaurs ruled the earth, uh, versus a 2013, I don't know. Let's just go with the 2013 and leave it alone. Hit the OK button. All you have to do now is go over to radio, say to the radio, get the memory channels, it's the usual stuff. Say yes, and there it goes. And it's pulling off of my radio all of the, most for the most part, the repeater information or the VHF, UHF uh, stuff that I've set up for my local area, my fair city of Philadelphia, somewhere stuck in time between uh, New York City and D.C., including some surrounds like New Jersey and so on and so forth. So there it is. That's um, everything that's come off the radio as far as the memory channels. And then you can just go over here to the save as and save it wherever you like. And put it to a nice safe place, wherever that happens to be, so that in the future, should things go pear-shaped, as my friends over in the UK would say, you have a backup. Where is this really useful? Well... Uh, the 991A doesn't get a firmware upgrade all that often, but it did not too long ago. So I decided eh, about a week or two ago to um, to install it. And fortunately, it didn't break the radio. Everything went A-OK. -okay. And before I did that, I backed up all of my hard-earned settings as far as memory and menus beforehand so that I didn't 
lose it all. And I would have because the firmware upgrade basically just trashed everything and put it right back to the, the default. Yeah, so you know how that feels. Yeah, we don't want that. The other thing you can do, which is really great, go to radio and go down to menu settings. And it gives you another spreadsheet. And that spreadsheet is for the menus of the 991A or whatever your whatever Yesu rig is supported. There's about five of them, I think. Why this is important is because in the 991A, you know that you're not has it's not a pretty icon system like you might see in the 7300. It's not like pretty buttons that are going to get you to each individual individual subgroupings. It's all one big list. It's like the line items on your tax return. It's just one big list. You got to put everything in there just right, or or they you know, things don't go well. And uh, you don't want to have to forget how that is set up. Otherwise, things aren't going to work for your other software. So you want to back this up as well. So what you do is the usual stuff. You go over to the radio. You say, get menu settings. And it will pull off of the radio all of the menu settings that you've spent all your hard-earned time putting in laboriously to get things to work just so so that you don't lose it and have to pull your hair out. I don't have much to pull out and do it again. So there it is. Same thing. Just save that as a file and that will be um, saved alongside of your memory file. Two things, two files, put them away somewhere nice and safe and that uh, you want to make changes to it again someday. You go back into the software and pull them up off the files, modify them, send them up to the radio and then go have a beer or something to that effect. And it says, do you want to change? You want to save that? Eh, I don't need to save that right now, but you could. So that's it. That is it. It is really cool. Very simple. Works like a doggone charm. There's nothing to it. And Chris is asking for a donation of $10, which is less than by half, uh, more than half, of the RT Systems software, except that the RT Systems software does a bit more. And uh, so you have to kind of evaluate which one you think is um, worth your money. You don't have to pay for this if you don't want to, um, but it would be nice because Chris put a lot of effort into this. All right, there you have it. More fun stuff for the FT991A. And, um, you know, the usual apply. Uh, subscribe if you must, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.